so see a little bit about Hiram, our student body, but also to see that um, when we talk about coming in for the computer science program, while obviously the focus within the academy is going to be on computer science, we have so much to offer your students across the board. Um, our students with the audio and the film, they partner with the local film studio. Um, we have one of the scenes in there, I'm not sure if, if you guys picked up on it, we actually operate a bank, a actual bank. Um, we partnered with Members First several um, years ago. Ms. Stubbs actually runs the bank with the students. Um, the students are actually bank tellers for Members First. If you bank with Members First, you see them on the weekends at the bank um, in Hiram, the, the actual branch in Hiram, but during the, the school week, they actually run the bank here. It's open during lunchtime and it's open after school for students and Paulton County employees to be able to use. Um, and so we are very, very strong in our beliefs that we want to offer innovative, oppor innovative opportunities for our students to gain real world experience for when they leave Hiram High School. So that is absolutely our goal with the Academy as well. So we have just a, um, another short video, talks about computer science again. Um, and computer science, again, talk about that it changes, it's changing everything. I think 19th century was about the industrial revolution, about electricity, about disrupting the agricultural society and making it more advanced. The 20th century was about physics and engineering to do more things easier in our everyday life from refrigerators to washing machines. How convenient. And the 21st century is definitely the digital age. It's the internet. Even if you want to become a race car driver or play baseball um, or, uh, you know, build a house, all of these things have been turned upside down by software. The Lettuce Bot is a robot that can sense its environment. Every single hour, this Lettuce Bot is seeing 1.5 million plants and it's taking individual action on those plants. We enable lettuce growers to have higher yields in their field by helping make it cheaper, by helping produce food in a more sustainable way. And that wasn't previously possible without computer science and technology. I have a really fun job where we build polyvore, which kind of combines all my favorite things, so programming as well as fashion and art and design and shopping. <laughs> Half the products you use these days are software products that you play with on maybe your phone. Right? And there's so many things that you can do with computer science. So if you just work backwards from the cool thing that you want to build and figure out what that is, a lot of times computer programming is part of that, right? So you should learn the skill. It's really exciting right now. The technology that we're developing right now is going to be used by your doctor in, you know, in the next decade. When you come into the office and you're sick, we'll put it into this magic machine, which is the sequencer, and in an hour I can tell you what you have or what's wrong with you. So if we're looking for a new virus, for example, we'll download a database of all the viruses that are known. And whole database of all viruses. So you still need somebody to analyze the data. <laughs> the computer is not smart enough yet. <laughs> Our software helps people save energy and thereby reduce their carbon emissions. To date, we've saved over 8 terawatt hours, which is the equivalent of about 1.1 million cars on the road. When you're forecasting the wind, there's so many different parameters that go into it. We need a computer model in order to forecast it. I write software which scans images. Looking for bad images, images that we know are illegal. I work very closely with organizations like the National Center for Missing Children. I know that the work that we've done has impacted the life of people. 
I feel very strongly about it because there's a lot of social problems right now that could really leverage the use of technology. It's a lot about empowering the people who are there helping the world by giving them the tools to be able to do better. That's something that we can do right now and the tools available are huge. The merging of art and technology is getting more and more significant now. Because computers and software are such an integral part of our lives day to day, people are realizing that it can be quite creative to take this medium of computers and create incredible works of art. In Finding Nemo, when Crush and Squirt and all the friends are flying through the East Australian current, you're seeing images of water flowing by, you're seeing the colors on the back of the turtle, you're seeing the sides of the fish. All of those things are generated through math and computer programs that we write that we then give to the artists and they take that to, to create that final image and tweak it and make it look beautiful and look fun. The crux of it is really about inventing everything. I always felt like if I didn't learn how to program, it, it would be like not learning how to read. You know, the, the, the future would just be closed to me. If you're in the coding profession, there's so many things that you can do and you can pretty much pick and choose the course you want to be in. I think that when I mean, you can start something in you know, your college dorm room and you can have a set of people who haven't built a big company before come together and build something that a billion people use as part of their, their daily lives is, is just crazy to think about, right? It's really, it's humbling and it's amazing. Really it's about the chance to reinvent things and then see it out there in the world and see people using it and having fun or having a better life because of something that that wasn't there before that you put in the world. Highlighting Hiram High School, first of all. I'm kind of fairly new here still, and I just wanted to go off my first day as coming here with the students here. I pulled up like seven o'clock, I'm like, yes, I'm early. No, the parking lot was full. Teachers were already here, students were already here getting involved, so that's one culture around here, and everybody's involved. So the next part is me being involved with computer science. So I always get asked, why computer science? Why computer science? So my answer is always, why not computer science? Why not? What's, what's wrong with computer science? So as you saw in the video, that computer science is everywhere. We don't even, stuff that we touch, we don't even think about it. It's computer science. The chairs we're sitting in is computer science. So I tell the kids all the time, they're like, what is computer science? Somebody had a problem. Somebody said, I don't want to stand this whole time. I want to sit down. So somebody came up with a solution to that problem. They invented chairs. So th things get progressed every day, every day. Like I was telling the kids at a visit we did this morning, like when I was younger, I'm putting my age on myself, uh, cassette tapes were cool. How many parents' cassette tapes were cool? And so I'm like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Now I'm like, what can be better than that? Now we have all these MP3 players. We have MP4s. We have stuff on our phones. You can put it on your watch, listen to music. So why not computer science? Like Ms. Cooksey was saying, when she was in the store, she had something almost roll her over, um, looking back like, where's the person that's controlling this? No one is there. So I even saw on the news the other night how they're programming it to people who don't have to do their yards anymore. You can just have a lawnmower just go and program it. So that's what computer science is. And so you see some familiar faces up here. I know um, our president, Barack Obama, was big on that, bringing computer science. It's like the next language, um, like the students were saying. It's in everything that we do. So um, the next part here, we always get asked, why computer science again? Well, 45% of schools don't teach computer science. It's only like a small Georgia is having a big step towards bringing computer science to every high school. So we're trying to get ahead of the game. That's and we wanna be able to be the ones to start that. So I'm glad you all are here to hear about this program, which is so cool. Paulding County. Then also, if you look up here, this is just talking about how much money the students can make and I've been in 10 years. Um, the different jobs in technology, because it's not getting backwards, going backwards, the internet of things before.
Okay, a couple of people. So basically that's taken all and she was up doing searches about dogs. Then all of a sudden the next day it came us for dogs. Who knew? They have groomers that come out to your house and do all these things for dogs. And so it's taking all that data, data mining, and putting it all together. So that's what we need your students for. The, it's in everything, in medicine, in all these different fields that we need your students for. Um, next slide. Uh oh, here we go. So that's are the highest rate increasing jobs in the industry now. So your student doesn't necessarily have to major in computer science when they leave here, but they will have some certifications that will put them above others if they want to go to the military, if they want to go. These are opening for them um, within the field of computer science. Let's see. Do you want to? In here, who have heard of dance party before? Out. Well, all the students. We have uh, two Saturday sessions, February first from 9 to 11, and then February 29th from 1 to 3. We have 60 spots and see what computers on the scenes, doing that coding and getting those dancing done, getting the different sprites is what they call them, to dance and do the different things that they want to do to the new music and the hip music that they love to do. So we're giving out flyers. Those are the flyers that are out front. So you can sign up for one of those sessions and have your students come out and just see what it's all about. So it's also about learning, it's about having fun, and it's about bringing everything that we do in the world together and being able to take that and push it into some type of career um, in their future with computer science. Okay, so any questions for me regarding computer science? Okay, well if you do have any questions later on, we still will, I'm sorry. Any questions that you, yes sir. <laughs> Good. Any other questions? Well, if you have any uh, for myself, I'll be here um, at the end of pr the presentation if you want to ask any personal questions as far as uh, computer science is concerned. Hand it back over to Ms. Cooksey. Thank you. Okay. So a little bit about the setup of the program. It's a magnet program. It's an academy program. So the students will their social studies. be in those courses together, but they will still have room to be able to take their other electives within the school building and have choices on those. So I'm going to show the, the sequencing part here in just a second. Um, I did want to give you just a brief overview. This will be posted. Feel free to take a picture of it if you'd like. Um, this just gives you an idea of some of the things that you're going to have to kind of gather up to put together for the application process. The middle schools are aware. They know um, that these are things that you're going to have to get from them. Um, so they're not going to be surprised or sound surprised or be like, what are you talking about when you reach out to your school or attendance report? way question students will to answer in a short answer for us just to give us a writing sample but then the second part is they and some videotape the videotape the only parameters on it it's got to be two minutes or less Other than that, it is up to the students' imagination, creativity. It is up to them how they want to answer it, how they want to do the video. Who's, who's you know, looking, looking at, we want to get an idea of their personality. We can't really sit down to interview each of them individually. So we want this to be a chance for them to express themselves to us. So they have the freedom to do that within the time frame and the time constraints. So, um, 
recommendation forms, um, and these will be electronically submitted by their teachers, their eighth grade math, their eighth grade science, and a current teacher. Now, one thing that's a little different, um, um, students needed to be typically above grade level, taking a lot of the ninth grade classes in the middle school. They need to be passing all of their eighth grade classes, and they need to be coming into high school on grade level. Okay, going into all regular ninth grade classes minimum um, to be able to be um, able to, to, you know, get into the program here. But they do not have to be um, in the gifted honors track. They can be. That's awesome if they are, but it is not required. Coming in for a student who's coming in, say they don't have any ninth grade courses from the middle school. This is what the course sequence is going to look like. When we talk about we are on block schedule at the high school level, so this will be first semester and this will be second. The blue are the core classes that they will take. The yellow are the electives that they'll have some choice in taking and science pathway courses that they will be working on taking, okay? When we get to their junior and senior year, we have something called uh, out as we get there because we will be looking at work-based learning internships with businesses in the computer science area specifically. We will also, they'll be able to be Now, folks are going to look at this and be, eh, but my child isn't typically an honors child and I'm a little concerned. Please don't be, okay? I am a firm believer that with enough support, interest on a student's part, be successful in an honor in those classes with some scaffolding and some help, okay? They're going to have, remember these are going to be cohorts. They're going to be together. You will see in ninth grade, they will be doubled up in math. They will have to take algebra one and geometry. Math is a core basis for computer science. We know that. You've got to have kind of that in your year, okay? school credits that they've taken at the middle school because we do know that we will have some students coming in. We will be able to work around that and be able to play a little bit with the schedule and, and work around that some. So they will have a little more options as in when they get to the, with some of those credits already in place there. The internships. on both of them it says here elective choice world language that's in there as a choice for this reason world language is not graduate high school however if you are going to a four-year college you do have to have two years of a foreign language therefore as whether or not they need to take that two years of the foreign language because we may have some students in the program who are tech college And that's those students individually on making that decision. Again, as you guys saw when we raised hands, most of you do not live within the, the busing pattern for Hiram High School. For the magnet, the district will provide high, to and from Hiram each day. Now, we don't know where those look program. Uh, and figure out where those hubs need to be. Um, I think right now, I know for the program at Paulding County High School, um, like one of the hubs um, is Abney Elementary School for students in that area. They go to the uh, elementary school and the bus picks them up there to get them to Paulding County High School for, for the magnet program. Um, to participate immediately with all extracurriculars through GHSA sports and all of that. You will be able to participate in all things Hiram High School. So whether it's banned, they will have the ability to be as a student. Some dates to remember. 
We are making the middle school visits now. Some of you guys I've seen already. Some of you I will see over the next week. The admissions application will open February 3rd. You will be able to find the link in a couple of ways. Way one will be on the Hiram High School webpage. Way two. about this meeting, you'll get a same email blast with a link to, to the application. Um, and then um, I will be also emailing to admission application closes March 3rd. Or, um, by March 20th. I'd love for your students to come and get a feel for the program for our teachers for our school and find out a little bit about us. Morgantown, West Virginia. Just to kind of wrap up my part and then I'm going to open it up to you guys for questions. Um, we have started construction on a whole new computer science classroom. And they have actually knocked the wall out. Demolition and so the wall has been knocked out. I would take you down but it's sealed off right now while they're doing the work. Um, but they are creating one giant classroom and it is going to be a brand new very modern, very modern, I can't speak this evening apparently, um, technology-based classroom. We're going to have walls that can be written on where the kids can plan together and work together. To We're going to have flexible seating, um, laptop carts, flexible seating. There's going to be hard record X's where students to bring in the idea of utilizing the technology in all the ways that we're trying to teach the kids. Um, and your students who are accepted into this program will be the first to get to use this classroom, to get to be a part of it, and get to kind of show it off. Truly, truly thrilled about this. We are looking forward to it. We think it's going to be a great opportunity. We are looking for 60 bright, excited young men and young women who are ready to come be a part of Hiram High School and the Hiram Academy. And come and be a part of it with us. So at this point, I'd like to open it up for you guys for questions um, at, that you feel like would be beneficial to everybody. Um, or if you've got one that you feel like would just be better served just for yourself, please feel free. Uh, at the end, I'll be down here and you can come up and ask me as well. So anybody have questions? Yes. Very good, very good questions. Thank you for asking. So supports that will be in place, obviously we will have teacher support, tutoring, extra help that is in place to, to help students try to get to where they need to be, um, to try to um, classes or anything of that nature in place um, but um, we will have you know the, the as much support as we can put in place with the teachers in there um, we are um, working with the students um, that will be coming into the program so that's that I think is going to be a huge huge part of that um, I am glad you asked about so students who come in who struggle so students um, if you're not passing 
after a semester at, at any point. Um, you will be put on probation, okay, for a semester to get your grades back up and get caught back up. If after a second semester you have not caught back up or got back up to all of the passing, you will be released from the academy program, okay? Now, at that point, you, you will have two choices. You'll be able to either go back to your home school or you can apply um, to remain at Hiram as just a regular student, but non academy student at Hiram to be able to remain. You would be able to apply through like school choice to stay put at Hiram. Other questions? Yes. Very good question, and we absolutely, one of the things about this program when we developed it in mind is we want our students in this program to be a part of the Hiram community, um, Hiram High School community. So we want our students to be involved. So we will work, while there may be some times that they need to be after school if they're part of the FBLA team or something of that nature, um, we work with the students to be able to be at football practice as well. So that is where our teachers work as a community to be able to work with one another to get our kids where they need to be. So that is something we've never run across an issue with. We won't run across an issue with it in this program either because we've designed this program with the understanding that our students are going to be integrated in the Hiram High School culture and we want them to be a part of it. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, they will. We will have clubs set up that will be part of it. It's um, what is the club? FBLA is is part of it. So that will be year round going on and part of it. We also have the robotics engineering group that will be a part of it, that they can be a part of it as well, um, which will integrate right in with this. Um, the reason that we don't have, first of all, course-wise, uh, and it, it will probably grow as the program grows. Um, some of it is, is we, we can only do so much as we initially get started with it. Um, but some of it too is we want students to be able, what we found is as we did our research, um, and I was talking to one of the parents coming in, um, we've talked to folks from all over the nation about different programs. We've been to Virginia, we've been to DC, we've been to Las Vegas. Um, we've Skyped and FaceTimed with schools from all around the country, um, looking at different programs and how are they doing them and getting feedback from them, getting feedback from our students. And one of the things that the feedback that we got um, was they wanted to be able to be involved in other electives as well. of their electives were just computer science. First of all, it, it absolutely will start to hinder who we may keep in the program. Um, and um, burnout becomes very, very high. Set up like that, they talked about losing kids after the first year or two, um, that the kids got very burned out because they couldn't take part in other parts of the high school experience. And so they designed it specifically to be able to be, to be normal high school as well. Yes, ma'am. Um, and that individually. Yes, sir. Started talking to several.
partner with some local companies. Um, we've actually talked to Home Depot um, and are working hand in hand with them right now, um, which they're they're a big one, and we're hoping to to work with them. Several of the companies that we've spoken to have um, kind of want us to come back a little bit later because we're still two years out from looking at the internships, and so they're talking to us but not really wanting to talk too much as of yet because we're still a little bit out. So um, that's uh, a process that we are still in works with. Please let me know. We are always, always looking for companies to partner with. So absolutely, please. And Mr. Hodge, where are you at? This gentleman right here is your touch person. This is this is how we make our connections is through our community and our parents. So absolutely yes. That <laughs> yes, sir. It, it is still an option, absolutely. So the Chattahoochee Tech is specifically where we're looking at trying to partner with them for some of the specific computer science courses, but for some of the academic courses and whatnot, the students will be able to do the dual enrollment wherever specifically they may be looking at. Any other questions? All right, I will be up here. So if you guys have questions, please come grab me, Mr. Hodge, Miss Robinson. Um, please, we will be glad to answer them. Thank you guys for your patience at coming out tonight. We truly, truly appreciate it. And I hope to see applications from all of you uh, students coming out. Thank you.